technician. Turn. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Woohoohoo! I switched it off pretty quickly. <laughs> yes, well done. You've got it started. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick update on the Rover P6. Uh, we're on our way back again. Uh, I know it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, starter motor problems. So the guy bought a brand new starter motor off eBay and it's fact. So we thought it was a battery, so we went to the bat bought a, bought a brand new battery, the battery was checking out okay, that's fine, we put that on, blah blah blah, and it's still doing the same, so I thought. Because the car turned over okay at first, and then it was getting slower and slower, it just sounded like a flat battery, and I had a sneaky feeling it would be the starter motor. And what a bastard to get out, once you've got the um, exhaust manifold on it. So anyway, got managed to get the thing out, he sent it back away, and I said, just use a local firm, refurbish the old starter motor that originally came out of the P6. So he's done that, it's come back, I've got it back in, it turns over really nice, it starts up on easy start, boom. Um, so we're just messing about with the SU carburetors now, um, so we're going to do a little bit of filming on it and then hopefully once I've set them up because the car's been just sat forever 27 years it hasn't budged he hasn't started it in 27 years so the engine was locked up I freed the engine um, he bought a new um, exhaust manifold so I put all that on so yeah let's see if we can uh, get this thing going properly today and to move but um, that's a good lesson not to buy shit off eBay um, if you're gonna mess about with having things refurbished don't mess about with eBay or go down the cheap way go to your local um, people who refurbish starter motors and alternators I said then if anything goes wrong with it it's just down the road you don't have to mess about sending the fucking thing back so it's been a bit of a chew I tell you eBay man it's shit anyway I'm in my supercharged Range Rover I've sold my 4.2 the best Range Rover is this one the 4.2 and yeah. I'm gutted <laughs> um, yeah I'm thinking well I just might as well use this as the workhorse now so this is the uh, L4 05 supercharged 2013 Range Rover it's got 90,335 miles on it um, I've had it since May I've already done two oil changes on it um, but yeah so far so good uh, apart from one little hiccup it's had that's this funny little story this so I was driving to a place called Stokesley in North Yorkshire beautiful little village and as I was driving to uh, Stokesley there's another beautiful little village called Great Inn. So as I was just flamonging through, that was only doing 30 miles an hour. Boom, all the lights came up. Uh, ABS sensor fault, this fault, this fault. Uh, bonnet open, I'm thinking, what the fuck's the matter with this now? It's been going great for the past six months. So this was the first hiccup. I thought, oh no. So anyway, I thought, right, I got to Stokesley. Uh, it also said restricted performance as well, to add to the the, uh, the spice of it all. I thought, right, I'll pack it up, I'll go and have a sandwich. So 
so I did that. I thought, well, it might correct itself. Sometimes they do. Anyway, I went for a sandwich, came back, started the car up, exactly the same. And then all of a sudden, the steering felt stiffish. I'm thinking, have I got a flat tyre as well? Because it was that warning light was on as well. So I uh, sort of, it's a bit like a semicircle sort of, um, like a little road. And as I came up to the junction, I thought, right, I've got to check the tyres. Because the steering feels really stiff. So I got out the car, as I did that, I looked around the tyres, they were okay, and then the door shut and locked itself. So here's the car at a junction, running, obviously, this little key I leave in the centre console. <laughs> so my advice to you, do not leave this Put it in your pocket at all times. So anyway, here I am, locked out the Range Rover, the car's running away at the junction, I'm thinking, hmm, what am I gonna do here? The missus is a wedding coordinator in a local um, uh, hotel called Rushpool Hall. She doesn't answer her phone, because obviously she's doing weddings and all that crap. I'm thinking, hmm, I hope my tenant in, Ramon, who is Spanish from Spain. So I'll give Ramon a call. And he, and now Ramon's a bit of an old fashioned guy. He still has the brick phone from the 1990s. Um, so he actually answered his phone, which he rarely does. He'd just come in from shopping. Wow, so I caught him. So anyway, Ramon doesn't know the area that well, even though he's been here for 10 years, he's never been to this place, that one he takes up, it's a 20 minute drive. Anyway, an hour and a half later, he, call, he pulls up in the car, because he had to Google his way, looks on the computer first, finds out where he's going. I'm steaming up here. And uh, yeah, comes to rescue me with a set, second set of keys. So, here I have with the second set of keys. Pointed at the car, presses the button. Nothing. I went, no, oh, here we go. What the fuck's going on with this thing? So nothing worked on the keys, the second the spare keys. So I'm thinking, hmm, what am I gonna do now? Now inside the key, the silver bit there, there's a, a, a little blade. So you pull it up like that, you get the little blade out, and then you slot it into the, the door handle, pull the plastic cap, and then you'll see where the key is. Put it in, finally opened. So I managed to get in the car and limp it home. So I put my snap-on diagnostic tool on it that I've got. That didn't like it either. So I managed to get the tailgate to work, uh, which wasn't working, because I just just did a full reboot on it. So the snap-on tool re just rebooted the computer. So a couple more things started to work on it. And then, sorry about this, I'm just concentrating on going down a very narrow road here. Well, come on. Right, okay. So where was I? So yeah, the snap-on tool, so I had to take it to Jaguar Land Rover. I thought, fuck it, they've got all the right tools and the, the right computer. Um, so it turned out to be a bad earth. Boom. But I went round all the, the leads I could see and everything looked all right. Well, guess where the, le the earth was? They said they had to take the front wheel off, take all the inner wheel arch out, and it was in there. So they put a new ball in there and boom, it's been fine ever since. So what a complete bastard. That cost me 400 quid. But there you go. Fucking computers and cars, man, I tell you. Uh, but apart from that, the car's been pretty good. Like I say, I've had it since May, March, April. Yeah, I would say May.
and I'm hoping, I'm just reversing now for where we're going. Um, but the car drives really nice, been all over in it, been in Manchester, Newcastle, behind man. Ooh, God, it's tight here. So yeah, I'll see you in a minute and I'll be uh, showing you what I've done and we'll get some uh, updates on this car. Hopefully I'm gonna get this thing moving. Right, see you soon.